Good morning, wrestling fans, and welcome to PWR Today. It is now Thursday morning. It's September 30th, the end of September 2021. The man they call me in, and the gentleman squire, Matthew Thomas. Matthew, I love our conversations off air, but how are you doing today on air? Oh, I'm doing wonderful on air and off air, just all around. Whether I'm on air, off air, in between air, mid air, you name it, man, I'm doing great. When you jump up, do you get some air? Uh, get a lot of air. Gotcha. All right. We uh, we had some good stuff going on last night, AEW uh, Dynamite. We had some news pop our way. But before we get into that, what is the man they call me and Matthew Thomas want the listeners to know most about what they should be wearing for the fall? Well, we want you to get dressed up for this fall season by outfitting yourself with the, the fine clothing over at CollarNelbowBrand.com. Enter promo code Linda K. Save 10% off. And I believe there were some new Collar and Elbow wares on AEW last night. Yeah, there was. Uh, I don't know what I would do with that shirt, though, from the Good Brothers. Um I I just want to wear it somewhere just to see what people's interpretation is. Right, of the shirt. that's what I'm saying. I'm looking at that, going, okay, that's new. I don't know if that fits my gimmick. I and don't I don't know. and I don't even know really what it means, but right. you know, I think it's open to interpretation. I think it is too. Now, my favorite Collar Noble gear to uh, ask people what their interpretation is is Festus face. Mm-hmm. You know, now he's never wore that on TV <laughs> to, to my uh, to my recollection. No, but I mean, I think it's uh, it's definitely that's that's definitely up there in my. I don't own it, but that's up there in my hierarchy of uh, favorite color and elbow shirts. <laughs> that is one that I wear that gets some serious looks. I'll tell you that right now. So Linda K L I N D A K A Y ten percent off. The link is in the comments. Go ahead and head on over to collarandelbowbrand.com. Let's talk a little bit of news here, real quick. Uh, the news is not looking good for NXT, Matthew. The ratings are in for Tuesday night's show, and uh, they've dropped again. They only drew 655,000 live viewers, which is down from the 746,000 they had the previous week. Mm. They don't have competition. They're not going up against Monday Night Football. Uh, It's not the baseball playoffs yet, so there's no excuses. They are getting their ass kicked, and nobody's watching. Yeah, no. I mean, they they have... They've rebranded, and I think that what has affected them too. I mean, some of the press that they did, I guess it was Nick Khan who made the comment about, you know, I mean, quintessentially they're done signing indie talent. Now, whether that uh, goes on to, to be the case, I don't know, but there is a stark departure from what NXT has been, uh, you know, what their MO has been for years. And that's been very evident here in these last several weeks. They're, they're going for a completely different feel. Do you know what, and this is in all seriousness, folks, this is not because, you know, we, you know, have a vested interest in it. Do you know what would get me to want to watch NXT right now and I think would be a perfect fit? What's that? Do you know what 18-year-old would probably fit into the NXT brand right now with the way it looks? What 18-year-old? 18. No, I I, I don't. I'll give you a hint. Are you down with FPP? Uh, FPP. Future. Oh, 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 my good. You're right. Tell me that he would not fit with that NXT colored brand the way it is. That's the color of his fanny pack. Tell me that Cal Hero would not fit into NXT. I think he would fit 100%. Now, let me again speak personally. I don't know if I want him in NXT right now. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. uh, do I want him under the, the the big national brand to learn from the best? Absolutely. Do I want him at the, you know the uh, you know the the PC training all the time? Absolutely. I want him learning from everybody. You know, getting some really good advice and getting some good training. However, I don't want him killed under that brand. Well, and let me ask you this too. I mean. Are you really setting people up the best way you can by quintessentially using primetime on Tuesday nights on USA Network as your televised developmental? I mean, the thing with NXT, you could make the developmental case before, but you had a lot of seasoning going on there with the people who were on the roster. It was basically a 50-50 mix is what you did. And let me run down to add to this and then respond back. Let me run down the names that were on Tuesday Night Show. Electra Lopez, 
B Fab, Zion Quinn. Um, we had Oni Lorcan, Zoe Stark, and Eosha Ride. Those names are on there. Toxic Attraction were two new names with uh, Mandy Rose. You also had Boa versus and or Andre Chase. Here's a no name. Roderick Strong, Grayson Waller, new name. Kyle Riley, you know, name that was there. Rich Holland, name that was there. And Raquel Gonzalez, name that was there against Frankie Monet, current name. But out of all those names, only half of those names are people that we even know who they are. Yeah, yeah. And when I say that we know who they are, that's because we're invested in the wrestling business. The rest of them are all right. brand new names. Right. And let me ask you this. I mean, where do you see a Ciampa or a Gargano or O'Reilly? Where do you see them in about five or six months in this new variation of NXT? I mean, it's not – you really got the perception that somebody like a Ciampa who – foreseeably had voice they wanted to stay there as opposed to a main roster it, it's no longer specifically champa and gargano yeah it's no long longer that company that's necessarily trying to run parallel to an roh or to you know what you had early on in aew it's it's not that wrestling wwe product anymore it's your developmental televised wwe product Right. They're broadcasting their training camp. Yeah. And that's what we're watching. We're watching training camp. We're watching preseason on a weekly basis. Now, you ask the question, where do I see a Ciampa or a Gargano in six months? I see them having a month-ish run with a competitor and then disappearing for two months. Yeah. That's how I see them, one at a time, cycling them in and out. Uh, Ciampa currently is the NXT champion, so he might you know, get a little bit more feature. But when he drops that belt to a Braun Breaker or somebody like that, I don't know where Ciampa fits in. And, I mean, it's very reminiscent of, I don't know what, I want to say it was like a like a Fox Sports South or something that carried it back in the mid-2000s. But when they were televising, I believe it was, was FCW when that was serving as the developmental. You weren't on USA. You existed on national television to a certain extent, but you were not running it parallel to your you WWE like a territory product. show. Yeah. Is what you look yeah. Like. And I don't know. I mean, it was, it was there and it existed if you wanted to seek it out, but you did not necessarily feel like you were giving, you know, these new young people, this, this much pressure and this high of a cliff in a lot of cases to run parallel to your uh, other WWE program. And it's just, it's, it's a strange feel, man. So it's, it's odd uh, to be very clear, um, but Hey, maybe it'll turn out to be great. And that's what we want. We just want it to be great. Um, but right now, you know, uh, it's just not entertaining to me. It is not built for me. One other bit of news before we walk into uh, AEW Dynamite from last night. CM Punk uh, had comments based on the New York State Athletic Commission not allowing dives. So, you know, uh, CM Punk has done some stage diving, you know, from the left to the right, jumping into the fans. Apparently, uh, the New York State Athletic Commission does not allow stage dives. Um, and, you know, Punk, uh, last night in Dynamite, we saw him kind of wave off people, and he was like, ah, I can't, you know, they, they want me to, but... Your thoughts on the regulation of them doing the stage diving? Mm, not a huge surprise when you start talking about athletic commissions and this, that, and the other. My other thing, though, man, as much as I've enjoyed seeing it week after week, I would imagine that Punk is not volunteering his time in AEW. I'm a little bit surprised that AEW has not put a stop to the stage dives before now. I get, I love it. I love the excitement that it brings, but I get a little nervous every time I see it. You know, you're not wrong from a company professional business standpoint, but this is kind of that renegade show. This is kind of that rebel show yeah. that's almost run by the uh, uh, inmates. So maybe speaking, there's some talks. Speaking of which, uh, does the New York State Athletic Commission, do they allow Glocks? Uh, I don't know, but we're going to get to the murderous Arn Anderson in a bit here. Good grief. <laughs> Let's start off with the opening match. Um, AEW does a great thing here so far, and they're going to continue to milt us, as they should. They play Punk's music. The crowd pops. Hey, Punk's going to go do commentary. All right, cool. Punk's here. He's doing commentary. Uh, I assume Punk's probably going to come out and talk on Rampage as well. <laughs> opening match, 
Adam Cole, baby. By the way, the number one song on iTunes in the heavy metal category. Can you believe that? I can believe it. And you almost like I, I noticed this this sequence here several weeks ago. I think we got it on a rampage or a dynamite. But you start looking at your AEW uh, sequence. Start looking at that almost like a set list. You enter with punk and cult of personality. Then you have Cole. And then who does Cole wrestle? Cole wrestles the jungle. But, oh, oh, exactly. oh, 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 so you are hitting you are hitting this crowd with three people that they're really interested in and you probably your three best uh three of your best songs in your WWE in your uh, I'm sorry your AEW catalog. Right. The business is working man and I've said for many years Pro Wrestling Report has been around since 1998. I joined Damian uh and Carl Love in 1999, right? So I've been doing this 22 years. I have said since day one, the thing that draws me to wrestling the most has always been the music. Yeah. And that's why, literally, I, I could not, I could, there could be a part of me that does not like Adam Cole, but that song hits me right away. And right, let's, let's look at, and I know we referenced it a little bit uh, a couple of nights ago, but let's look at what AEW does on a production level in regards to these introductions. You have your, li- your live crowd shot, you have Punk enter. You stay with the crowd. You have Cole enter. You stay with the crowd. You have Jungle Boy enter. You stay with the crowd. You are not going to recaps immediately. You yep. are not having the audience watch a screen, your talent watch a screen. You are staying in the arena and building up that excitement. Building up the excitement, A, for the people there, B, for the people watching at home, hoping to get to the live show the next time they hit their town. Exactly. It's wrestling 101, man. All right, Adam Cole and Jungle Boy, this was the wrestling match I thought it would be, and that is a good thing because these guys work. Now, of course, I also thought Adam Cole would win this match. This brought out the super elite, uh, B, elite. As stupid as that song is, it's not bad. (laughs) I actually, you know, I think it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's chanty, right? You know, you can sing along to it, but it's a bad song. But it's for a heel, so it makes you feel like you should boo that you understand what they're doing there all right so really what we get here is we get an interaction between kenny omega and brian danielson and uh brian danielson sets up a match i believe it's going to be for rampage it's an eight-man tag or did i see a six-man i i believe rampage you've actually got a I think coming up you've got a one-on-one i think it was announced a little bit later it might be dynamite next week it's announced a little bit late in the program, but I think for Rampage, you've actually got Nick Jack. It's either Nick or Nick, Matt Jackson. I think it's yep, Nick Jackson Brian versus Brian Danielson. Yep. But I think that eight man is coming up for Dynamite. It'll be Christian you King, Frankie Kazarian, uh, Jungle Boy, and it might be. It might. I don't know. We're gonna have to dig into that. But like I said, uh, you know, get in the crowd to chant Kenny No Balls Omega. You've got no balls. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, no, a couple things here. Uh, match with Cole and Jungle Boy, I, I thought was a very, very solid match. Um, I, the outcome was what I thought it was going to be, but they had me convinced that I might be wrong, and that goes a long, long ways. And I want to go back to to one of your false finishes there, where you actually had where you had that screenshot of Cole in disbelief, like laying right next to Audrey in disbelief uh go back and watch that freeze frame frame that that was a really really good shot there great opening match uh really good sequence this is what AEW did very effectively last night wwe they tend to get people out there and keep them out there for like another tag match or something this all made sense you had the elite coming out there because cole was out there which in turn brought out brian look at the star power in your first 30 minutes of AEW. You've got CM Punk. You've got Adam Cole, Jungle Boy. You've got the elite out there bringing Daniel Bryan out. My goodness, this is a – Bryan Danielson, excuse me. This is a star-studded cast of characters. Actually, I'm going to stop you there. Uh I sent an article to us, and I wanted us to review that. You mentioned the – really the the top half of the AEW roster. There has been talk that it is very Caucasian. You're, I want to hear your thoughts on that because they're not wrong. I mean, if you think about it, African American or even Latino uh, are not at the top of the card currently in AEW. 
Yeah, no, that's that's an accurate statement. Um, you know, I it is I will give I will give AEW uh, more leeway there than you've necessarily had with WWE over the years, because uh, you look at WWE's track record for a company that's been around for as long as they have right. AEW in their defense. It's a it is a two year old company. Well, next um, week it'll be two years old. Yeah, you know. Well, so next we week are, is the two year uh, anniversary of Dynamite. It's older than two years. But. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I, you know, that's. But you're you're not wrong. That is a. Uh, I mean, that's an observation that that is that holds true as far as the top of the card goes. Yeah, and you know, WWE, I think in uh, contrast as well, currently have at the top of their card on Raw. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at it. You've got Bobby and you've got Big E going one on one with each other, and then Roman Reigns is, uh, you know, as they used to say way back in the day, an island boy, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, they got a little bit more diversity, but they've had fifty years to get diverse. Yeah, yeah. So, now, and, 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 and it's case. definitely, and it's definitely, it definitely has not always been WWF slash WWE's calling card, and that's yeah. a a completely long different discussion. Big E uh, is only the third African American champion, I believe. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I mean Bobby Lashley can, was the second. You know, you can take one hand. You can take one hand and count. I mean, that's yeah. in in the how long of a history of a company. They need to they need to pick it up. All right, let's yeah. talk about the second match. Let's go back in there. Sorry, I kind of uh, sidetracked us there. Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson um, with Arn Anderson and Brandy Rhodes outside against Dante Martin and Matt Seidel. I'm not sure what's happening to Dante Martin's partner or Matt Seidel's brother, his partner. But uh, top flights, Dante Martin and the Seidel brothers, Matt, uh, taking on the team of Rhodes and Lee Johnson. We're going to get to it in a second. Uh, this was a awkward paced match. And when Cody Rhodes came to the microphone, the crowd instantly started booing him. Now, Arn Anderson came to the microphone. Uh, the winners of the match, by the way, Rhodes and Lee Johnson. Arn Anderson came to the microphone and says, if I get anybody come to my car, I'm pulling out my Glock and I'm going to murder somebody. Has he been taking the Goldberg school of promos? They went to pro same promo class. They went, they went to the same. Or uh, did he learn it from Arn Anderson? I I don't know. I don't know. But Meathead, he, he's talking about like the, the murder thing is bad enough, but he's talking about a carjacking. Where's the carjacking thing coming from, man? Uh, this was awkward. And I don't know what the hell's going on, but it's not for my TV. I don't like it. I mean, the Goldberg thing is bad enough because it's a it's a broad threat of murder, you know, like. But when you specifically tell someone how you are going to murder them and the 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 fallout, like the visual of what that looks like. Yeah, this was uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable. It's not as uncomfortable as, say, New Jack promos that used to really get just explicit. But um it's still uncomfortable to me, and I don't like it. Um, AEW, for all the things that they do right, they can do some things wrong, and I don't like this whole path that they're going down right now. Well, and, you know, here's the thing. I don't know. Did somebody steal Cody's car recently? I'm not sure. But speaking about Cody and cars, I have been near Cody when we were both in cars. Me and Cody actually met one night at a gas pump about, like, uh, 20 – 14, 2013, I think it would have been. Yep, we were both filling up our cars. Did he have Arn Anderson next to him with a Glock? No, but he had Damian Sandow. Okay, well, let's see how that worked out for Damian. Mm -hmm. Let's talk trios match. It was Darby, Eddie Kingston, and Moxley, but Sting, against Anthony Green and Bear Country, Bear Boulder, and Bear Bronson. Um, thank you for bringing in Bear Country. You know, we haven't seen him in a while. It's nice to see him on TV. But this was a, min, a win, an instant win for Allen, Kingston, and Moxley. Yeah. I think this was just kind of there so Kingston and Moxley could walk through the crowd. Yeah. Uh, so Kingston and Moxley, I mean, Kingston's, uh, or excuse me, Moxley's music is Wild Thing, but it's more so that he gets to interact with the crowd. Mm -hmm. That's why I was uh, here. Britt Baker, DMD, Ruby Soho cut promos about last week's main event where uh, Ruby did not win the women's championship. You know, she pointed out something that I've already pointed out, and it's funny that she said it because you know why people cheer for you? They like your song. That's it. They don't like you. They like the music. That's wild. That's very good from a – I mean, that's what the best heels do 
they have truths in their statement, truth in their statements. Right. A heel is only a heel because they believe in what they're doing, even though right. it might not match with what the face is doing. So mm -hmm. that's the best bad guy is they have belief in what they're doing is right. Here's what's not right. I thought we had moved away from this, Matthew. You can remember us talking over and over about the multiple man <laughs> tag matches. 16 man tag match. I did, not, I did not know what we were going into. Like, I didn't know what this was setting Holy. up until I hear... 16 man tag match. <laughs> All right. So let me call it out. 16 man tag match. We had the Dark Order, who was 10, Alan Angels, Alex Reynolds, Cole Cabana, boom, boom, Evil Uno, and Stu Grayson, and Orange Cassidy with negative one, taking on the Harley, uh, the Hardy family office, and Helico, Jack Evans, George Joel, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, Matt Hardy, The Blade, and The Butcher. And I assume Bunny was out there too. But 16 man tag. Dude, at the end of this match, and Punk even called it out on commentary. Apparently, there's no five count because they had, at any given point, six or seven people in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? I don't know if you. I don't know if you enforce uh, tag ropes at this point either. But <laughs> the uh, tag ropes aren't in the middle of the rope. You know what? To their to their credit, it's been a long time since we talked about this. They haven't been doing it near as much as they used to. And I think it was just here to get Dark Order on there so you could have that Brody moment. Of course. Well, they brought out Mrs. Dark Order to because uh, Negative One wasn't having it, so he called his mom. Somebody call my mama! And uh, they put the Dark Order back together again, and uh, they just started going off on each other, or off on the uh, other eight members of the tag yeah. match. Yep. Wow. 16-man tag. For the love <laughs> of God. <laughs> Leo Rush uh, cut a promo. He uh, says Tony Khan wants him to be an all-elite, but... Uh, is he actually going to come and work? I thought Leo Rush retired. I thought so too, but my goodness, he cut a promo on your main show, so I'm assuming he's with the company. Yeah, I got to assume he is too. Uh, Dan Lambert in the ring with the men of the year, and they talk about how they just ran down Chris Jericho and uh, Jake Hager. So uh, men of the year and top team, uh, looking like a good, solid heel faction. Now, the rest of the guys hanging around uh, men of the year, are just there for show. Yeah. I don't see them ever actually working multiple matches, but you know, uh, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky hopefully can get over with us. Well, here's what's so interesting too. You know, normally you think about somebody having a mouthpiece. It's not a great talker. You've got three great talkers in the ring. You know, you've got Lambert, Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, who, by the way, I don't know if you caught it or not. Ethan Page claiming to have the tightest tits in the company. Well, I mean, that's how they used to roll an impact. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I thought this this is a real this is a really good uh, tandem. And my goodness, uh, it's talking about people with uh, with vocal skills. Uh, you definitely got it there with this bunch. Yep. Hikaru Shida cut her promo and said she's trying to be the first woman to get 50 wins. And guess who she's going to go up against next week on Dynamite? I'm so happy to a see her. Returning Serena, Serena Deeb. Deeb. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me more about Serena Deeb. I think she needs to win this. I mean, you know, you're trying to establish your your uh, women's division, and I get it's a 50 win milestone, but uh, what that's telling me is you've also beat 50 other women. And when you're trying to get your women's division off the ground, taking that taking that momentum right there and being the person to stop this 50 win, you, you know, know, it's like not, the Brewers beating the Cardinals to end the 17 yeah. game winning streak, you know? Yeah, and you've got. You know, you've got your women's title, but you don't you don't have tag team titles yet in AEW. You don't have anything right now. You don't have a brass ring other than that women's title. Have Serena stop this 50, uh, stop Ever this 50th win. Times. It make Sheeta yeah. work for the 50th, I think. It, exactly. So have Serena get that and then maybe have her struggle a little bit in picking up that 50th win. Give her yeah. give her a story and get some people behind her, you know. Problem is, though, that they have AEW Dark, and she'll end up yeah. being on AEW Dark and end up catching a win on there. Right, right. But they wouldn't make the 50th win, I don't think, on AEW Dark. I have. don't believe so, no. Uh, Anna Jay and Tay Conte take on Penelope Ford and the Bunny. Again, Negative One comes out. You know, Negative One's got his own uh, theme music now. He does, and you can listen to that on Spotify or uh, whatever other major outlet you listen to your music on. It's amazing the way that works. Uh, MJF, what a great promo. And here comes Darby Allen. And are we going to start something with MJF and Darby Allen? I love the whole pillars thing. And he kind of blew past Darby Allen. It says, beat the other pillars. And I'm one of the pillars. 
But uh, Darby Allen comes out and goes, you talk too much. You talk too much. You're not going to get my game. You're They leave. Darby Allen, yeah. MJF, is what I want to see. And his uh, more, it, it, it reminded me a lot of what he did with Brian Pillman Jr. Going into the person's actual backstory, going into their actual family tragedy that they've had in their life. This was a page out of that playbook. Uh, kind yeah. of an I know odd... I'm not supposed to laugh when he said the wrong person died, but it makes me think of Dewey Cox, uh, Walk Hard. Walk wrong hard. kid died. So let me ask you this. What did you make of the Bruce Pritchard reference? I thought it was funny. And then Punk goes, what? That's nothing. Everybody's got Bruce Pritchard on speed to hell. Well, let me ask you this. Is this is that them basically, you know, trying to kind of legally do what they can for a WWE reference? Because you stop and think about it. Bruce Pritchard, Bruce Pritchard. You know, he didn't say brother love. What's huh? illegal about the mentioning? The reason the companies never mentioned each other, because you don't want to put another company over. Right. There's nothing illegal about mentioning and them. and my understanding of it too, you wouldn't necessarily go and mention a WWE owned trademark, would you? Like you wouldn't mention necessarily um I'm just trying to think of a the Undertaker or a trademark name, but you've got a Bruce Pritchard who's the guy's real name. So right, you would mention a Mark Calloway. Right, right. Exactly. So I mean I think that's you know something that yeah, it, it it seemed a little out of place because I mean honestly right now it's not you you may garner a little bit of attention if say TNA did it at any point but AEW with the hot streak they've been on it, it it's not nece- it's not needed at this point. Still, it was entertaining. All right, so here's what's announced for Friday's tomorrow night's uh, Rampage. There's a three way match between Jade Cargill, Nyla Rose, and Thunder Rosa. This is going to elevate the women's division more. Hair versus hair, it's going to be Jack Evans and Orange Cassidy, and Brian Danielson takes on Nick Jackson. The match I was talking about is next week's Dynamite. Eight-man tag, Cage, Danielson, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus versus the Elite. They're doing the Casino Ladder match. Holy, why? Why on Dynamite? Why are we doing a Casino Ladder match? Save that for pay-per-view. And then Sheeta versus Deeb. Yeah. I mean, you you continually, one good thing they do from show to show it, yeah, you build these cards that you look forward to, and it's an assortment of talent. You know, it's not the same guys wrestling each other every single week. Wait, it's not Sheamus and Humberto Carrillo every week? Unfortunately not. Oh, man. All right. TNT Championship, the main event, Miro and Sammy Guevara. Um, they offered the TNT Championship as one of the prizes if you win the match, but they didn't mention uh, Fuego, <laughs> excuse me, Fuego Del Sol's car. Well... Your winner and new TNT champion, Sammy Guevara. And I wanted to hear Bob Barker piped in over the audio. You want a brand new car? <laughs> and then have Fuego Del Sol come down and go, oh, my God, I won, I won. And then have him bid on it. Oh, my God, that would have been great. Honestly, this is one of the biggest uh, AEW booking surprises that I personally have seen. I thought Sammy definitely had the possibility to be a future TNT champion, did not see it happening last night, did not think they were going to pull the trigger, just how strong Miro had been booked. Um, man, this this surprised me, and this was a big moment, and this is some big news coming out of last night's show. Bigger news coming out of post last night's show. So the gimmick that they did last night was they said, hey, if you want to hear the first words out of a new TNT champion, Sammy Guevara, stick around and watch the opening minutes of the brand new TV show, Roads to the Top, with Cody and uh, Brandy Rhodes, which we'll get into that in a second. But they said at the first commercial break, we'll have a new interview, live interview, with Sammy Guevara, the new TNT champion. In that interview, which, folks, if you didn't watch it, big news. Sammy Guevara is talking about how it's great to win. He's got uh, Fuego del Sol there. And then all of a sudden he says, and I'm getting all these people tweeting at me. The first person that tweets at me, Bobby Fish. Bobby, you don't even work here. Quote, unquote, from Sammy Guevara. But you know what? Forbidden door. If you want a shot, come on, kid. Come on to Dynamite next week. So announced for Dynamite next week, Bobby Fish, former NXT talent, (coughs) will have a one-on-one championship match against Sammy Guevara. Matthew, go. Uh, Wow. That was very, very quick. Um, and that whole little deal where you break that into the show that comes on afterwards, I think we, we've seen TNT do that a few times before, about uh, 25 years or so ago. 
Yeah, TNT. Remember what happened the, the day after uh, Starcade with Sting won the belt over Hogan? They were going to have a rematch on Nitro that night. Huge match. I mean, they were killing Raw at that point. And then they couldn't show the finish of it because we're out of time. If you want to see the finish of this, join us on the brand new show, Thunder, this Thursday. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Can TNT I need to go with back your, and... your clever TV tricks. Damn you, Ted Turner. I need to go back and see because I know they've done some stuff that probably predated that, too. I remember... I remember them going into something that was during the commercial break of like, was it a Robin Hood show or something that ran after that they do like a Robin Hood men in tights, like spinoff or something. I don't know if it was a spinoff, but I mean, I I feel like there was a show there for a while. Yeah. And to be honest, they had done that a bunch of times, you know, Nitro during the Eric Bischoff run, (laughs) this is pre NWO and post NWO during the Bischoff run. Did all sorts of crazy stuff as far as TV. Like if they were going to go live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, they would come on the air at 57, right? Yeah. Because they're trying to pop that quarter rating. They would, uh, you know, you'd have a, a commercial break. This is probably what you're thinking of. Commercial break at the end of whatever's airing right before Nitro. So yeah. the commercial break before the last segment of that movie or that TV yeah. show that you're watching, show them walking up and things would happen during that commercial break. Yeah, yeah. Now, and I mean, it's, you know, what amazes me is these similarities that you you see in AEW, like as far as TNT, as far as production. And I think what really stands out to me, it was the case with WCW, especially WCW's run on TNT. And it's the case right now with AEW on TNT. When I'm watching their coverage of AEW, I feel much more like I'm watching a sporting event than I do with, say, a produced product like WWE. Don't make me repeat it from yesterday where WWE is just uh, showing you a TV show that has wrestling on it yeah. versus AEW is broadcasting live their live event. Don't you, like how, I set, don't you like how I set you up for that wonderful insight? You did. And it, again, when I first typed it in there, I wasn't doing anything. I mean, that literally just came to the top of my head. So, all right. Um, I do want to talk about Roads to the Top. I did watch that first 15 minutes. And I will never get out of my head again. Brandy Rhodes saying that giving childbirth is like feed me Seymour from the Little Shop of Horrors as a baby comes out of there. That is. Yeah, I haven't watched uh, Rhodes to the Top yet, and uh, I may uh, have to, to see it for myself. Yeah, the, uh, so you're Rhodes you're to the not Top, not, not their, not their no childbirth. Children, right? No, I, I don't. For those listening that are parents, you know, mothers, fathers, whatever you may be. Um, I am a father. I've been with my wife, you know, uh, and the, the position that the husband should be in so they don't have to see Seymour, you know, feed me Seymour, is you should be in the back holding the hand and working the top of the head and let the doctor down there to see what's going on because I don't want to see any of that. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. I thought like, you know, like 50 sitcoms and stuff like you, you as the, the father, you hang out in the father's waiting room and you smoke cigars no. and they come and get you when the baby's ready. No, no. Uh, I cut the umbilical cord. So that yeah. was creepy. But is is that like, a, I'm, I imagine like a pair of like kitchen scissors or something that'll, that takes care of it. Heavy duty kitchen scissors. Something like that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Like I said, that uh, the Feed Me Seymour and a baby coming out and having Brandy Rhodes discuss that on the show, I can never look at her the same again. Um, and I don't know how Cody feels about that, but wow. You do know that we have to put uh, umbilical cord in the title in the show title for this morning's show. Correct? I don't know if I know how to spell umbilical cord. <laughs> it's it's a, it's it's deceiving. It's deceiving, but it's a U. I think it starts with a U. It's umbilical. Baby. Umbilical cord, yeah. Because it kind of sounds like umbilical, but it's umbilical. Uh, well, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no, thank you, folks. I know you're already listening, but while we're recording this, I haven't made the title. I'm not putting umbilical cord in there. <laughs> I'm just saying it's a possibility. It is a possibility. But here's a possibility that you join us tomorrow morning for more of PWR today. We don't know where we're going to go. But one of the things we do plan on touching on is Seth Rollins on the Broken Skull Sessions with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Plus, we get you ready for Rampage and SmackDown and the draft coming up tomorrow night. So for Matthew Thomas, the man they call me today, hey, thanks for stopping by. So long, everyone.